There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Colon. Dr. Colon and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon. Welcome to Destination University. If you are a college-bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. We are running a special series interviewing real teens with real dreams who have been admitted to college. I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, author of the book, Be Committed, Get Admitted, and founder of Dream College Academy and College Essay Bootcamp. Wherever you are tuning in from, you are definitely in for a treat. So grab your beverage of choice and a notepad because you're going to hear some golden nuggets from our star student today, Esteban. Today, you're gonna to learn what he did right, any regrets that he might have, and he'll reveal his dream college where he's headed to. So without further ado, I wanna say hello to Esteban. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Very happy to be here and super excited to start. Yay, I'm so excited. Uh, I mean, I, truth be told to everybody who's listening or watching, gosh, um, we met oh, well over a year ago when we started sort of coming to the webinars and um, I have just loved your family. They're so all so super supportive and positive. So I can't wait for everyone to meet you and hear what you have to share. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, we're going to just dig right in and, you know, we want to start without revealing where you're actually choosing to attend, share with us sort of the range of colleges that you were admitted to, and maybe if you received any you know, financial aid, um, not financial aid, merit aid, I should say. So share a bit about that. So um, when, when I started my college application process, I wanted to cast a wide net of colleges, um, mo but kind of mostly on like the West Coast um, and on the East Coast, because I mean, I love who who doesn't love the West Coast? I live right here in San Diego, so I love all that. But um, I was admitted. I applied to some like smaller, smaller private Catholic schools like Loyola Marymount University, Santa Clara University, and the University of San Diego. And I also got admitted to San Diego State University. And I got a lot of merit back from the um, private Catholic schools. About I don't know, hundred like I think combined, I think a hundred thousand. I'm very proud of that. And it was like merit scholarships and and grants and I'm very fortunate to have received those offers but I did get an offer for I did get an even better offer that I will reveal later oh fantastic well you know I jumped right in and I didn't even give you a chance to introduce yourself I see you're wearing your high school paraphernalia here so so share with everybody you know where you're from what high school you attend because we do have students and camp essay campers that are from across the country but share uh where you're from um, I'm Esteban. I'm here from San Diego, California, and I attended Cathedral Catholic High School, really great high school. So um, I'm a first generation, um, first generation born in the United States, Hispanic, Latino. Um, yeah, yeah, so I have that kind of background and, and yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. You're, you're an only child. You, um, I just love, you know, your parents have just been so great. So I love it. And I see that you're wearing, you know, your Don's, you know, jacket there. Yeah, this is my, one of my favorite track and field jackets. I'm like, I'm just going to decide to keep it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So looking back on the last four years of your high school experience, what did you do right? In other words, if you, you know, were going to uh, speak to a, a group of students who were going to be starting, they're going to be starting high school, what advice would you have for them? Overall, I would say first go into high school with the right mentality. I know sometimes like having like a new change would be like a little bit scary sometimes, but I just went forward with the mentality being 1% better and just improving every day. So overall, I took a lot of like advanced courses that were very interesting, like honors, AP, dual enrollment, you name it. Um, I also cast a wide net of like extracurricular activities and that I was interested in. I was the president of the National English Honor Society the lead tutor for the National Honor Society, and a school ambassador, um, a co-leader of a tutoring club called Numbers and Neighbors, where we tutor kids around our neighborhoods, 
and I was also a senior leader on varsity cross country. Now, those are some of like the the some of the top positions. Like, I can't name them all. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, so I, what I hear you saying is like go in with a positive and um, optimistic outlook on in high school. Also, I hear you saying get involved. You were involved in a number of different um, things that you just listed, which is great. Now, I also think that you know you speak highly of sort of building relationships with um, the adults on campus. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, absolutely. It's just a mentality of like going to um, going to like meet people, be friendly, be kind, and always be respectful. Those are that's gonna that really goes a long way. So I was able to like talk to everybody from from the president of the school to the school janitor to the security guards. Like I just made sure like like my presence was like known on campus and just like have awesome interactions because you never know what what someone might be able to do and the great relationships you'll build with everyone around you at your high school and even beyond. It's very important to network. Yeah, it is very, I completely agree. And um, I don't think I learned that as a high school student. So it's great that you sort of picked that up or figured that out early on. Um, any advice you would have for someone who's, you know, just a 14 year old and a little bit nervous about going up to a teacher after class or you know, anything, anything, any advice you can offer? Well, in in my opinion, like for my high school, everyone was so welcoming, so kind, like really so open for like any kind of discussions, conversation. So just knowing that that everyone's going to be there, everyone's very kind and they want the best for you. They want you to succeed kind of gives you a little bit of like peace, like, OK, I can go talk to this teacher like I can go like get what I need or like get help or anything that I might need. There are always adults, there are always people in your life that are here to support you. So just kind of having that would be very helpful. And honestly, just sometimes stepping out of our comfort zone a little bit and, and embracing embracing the beauty of life. Yes, absolutely. And I think you're right. Like, uh, you know, adults that go into education as teachers or administrators really do want the best for you. So, okay. Now, so, you know, the next question is really about sort of the real truth, meaning that even, you know, every single student who is a senior and goes through this process, they always have something they wish they would have done slightly differently or earlier or whatever it is. So for you, Esteban, what's the truth about what you wish, if, if there are any regrets that you have or just something that you wish you would have done um, in the past four years? Well, first, I would like to say I wish I had found Dr. Cologne earlier and especially my freshman year. I wish I had been part of Dream College Academy and done like a college essay boot camp in my junior year. I think it would have been more important for me to like kind of have a have a plan, have a plan of action in my freshman year rather than kind of just like rather than like when it typically starts in like you the spring of your junior year, just like being prepared about like my future options and just think about my career and everything would have helped me. Also, I wish I had taken a couple AP science courses like AP physics, AP chemistry. Um, I wish I could have done it because I I'm pretty sure I would have done really well, but honestly, not many regrets, and I'm I'm happy with how it ended up today. That's just what I wanted to mention. Yeah, so I love what you're saying about, uh, and thanks for the. I didn't pay him, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think what you're really saying is is whatever you do, just to start thinking about your plan of action as early as possible. And if you get can get some guidance, even more bonus, we do offer Dream College Academy early on and, and some, some rising freshmen, I mean, some freshmen and sophomores take that early on. But just having a plan of action and then um, and then a couple of these uh, AP classes that you would, have, you would have taken. So yeah, I always say, there's not a single senior I've met that says, I wish I would have done fewer honors or AP classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it so, goes. Yeah, yeah, I love it, I love it. Okay, um, so let's see. The next question I have is um, share with us. So some students approach finding, figuring out what their college list is based on what they want to major in. And some folks approach it as like what kind of college they're looking for, like maybe based on geographic location or size of the school or something like that. So Share with us what were the things that were most important to you as you were starting to say narrow your list of colleges. Well, one of the first things I was looking for um, was like a duplicate, or like I, I I like to say five five point of like my high school. My high school, people in my high school were like really welcoming, really kind, like 
um, very smart, very driven. And I just want to find people that just welcome a community where everybody's like supporting each other and like, and where people really care. And the second thing is um, a work hard, play hard mentality. I might be hinting to something, but um, just like going to having like rigorous academic courses and, and professors that challenge you to be better, professors that are like always there to help you and really engage students in in the materials, in the material and want them to succeed and offer internships while also having like a strong, strongly knit um, community on campus and just like a lot of school spirit and and just overall fun events for students to be in. And just number three was a a very strong alumni network, um, network that's like from around the globe and people that are people that in the profession that you would like to go to that are that are always happy to help and always like happy to mentor you or to just help you succeed in whatever way that is. So, I mean, that was personally for me. I mean, also like location impacted a little bit of where I'm going to, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to say. Thank you. Yeah. So. Okay, to reiterate, you know, good, warm, welcoming, kind people and driven people, similar to folks that you found at your high school. And then the second thing I heard you say was uh, really, I love the way you put it, like a work hard, play hard mentality. Um, college is going to be hard, no matter where, you know, no matter where you go, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, there's a lot to learn, um, you know, a lot to navigate. So, but obviously pushing yourself, by, but also having a good time. And then the alumni network, again, I would, I just give you accolades, any teenager uh, or someone who's graduating, a young man graduating from high school that understands the power of networking early on is you're, you're already, you're already successful. So understanding that power that the alumni have is really, really important. So, mm, okay. Those are some good values. All right. That you were looking for. Okay. So, and we know that you were also mostly applying to schools on the West coast. And I would say mostly in, you know, in California. So that was important. Geographic location for you was also important as well. Um, okay, so the time has come. Um, you're going to share with our audience, you know, where you're, what you chose, where you're headed. And then we'll sort of unpack, we'll have some time to sort of unpack that and share with them, you know, why you chose it. And then any sort of fun uh, little facts about the institution. So drum roll, please. Okay, share with everybody where you're going. All right. I next year in well in the fall, in a couple months or actually one month, I will be at USC. Oh my God! Look at this, the Marshall School of Business. You guys, can you see? If you're those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll see his shirt. It says USC Marshall. Those of you who are listening, I'm explaining to you. Okay, so you know those of you who've been following me for a long time, I talk nonstop about USC because I am a Trojan. And if someone is correct, the Trojan Network is like crazy. They just big love fest for each other. We just have a big love fest for each other. So that being said, I'll get my bias out of it. If someone share with um, the audience sort of how you came to this decision and, and you might even tell the story about um, Mr. Brunold um, and, and how he reached out to you. So go ahead, share why you chose USC. Absolutely. So um, I took a tour in June of last year, and when I stepped on foot of campus, I loved it. I loved our like our tour and just like the several opportunities that were involved there. The like I mentioned earlier, the very like rigorous and challenging courses professors that like push you to be your best yet are always there to help you. Um, I'm really excited for. I'm really excited for like the spirit like. USC is very, really known for their like strong spirit. And we all obviously have the greatest marching band history of the universe. <laughs> and um, also just going, I was, I was part of this organization called the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. And I got to attend a um, an in-person like empowerment conference, which was at USC where I got to meet um, some people like Dr. Glasgow, which is, which is the um, vice president for undergraduate enrollment and just other people from there and just kind of talking to them about USC really made me fall in love with it even more. And then in terms of Dean Brunold, um, well, Mr. Bruno, Mr. Tim Bruno, he's a um, Dean of Admission at USC. Um, yeah, so yeah. on the day that I got accepted in January, in last January, I like submitted my spot. I, I said yes right away because I wanted to show up my spot and like show that I'm really excited to be we're excited to be coming, and then 
I asked you as to, I asked you if I could have like Dean Bruno's contact and we've had a couple of, you know, emailing sessions and, and he's also like a big baseball fan like I am. And I'm very blessed and honored to have this opportunity. Thanks to you, Dr. Colon. Oh my goodness. So I just, so uh, Tim Reynold is, is a friend and a colleague, but he, I remembered that he loved baseball. Um, I've been to his office and he, and he had, I, and I can't remember what his team is. His team Dodgers, right? Yeah, I think his team is the Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I remembered from oh, oh, several years ago. And so when someone was telling me about his love of baseball, and I, of course, learned about him through SE Camp and all these things, I was like, oh my gosh, you have to email him and, and tell him about your love of baseball. And he was more than kind and generous to send you a very long response. And uh, I think you've met him. You, you met him on campus, right? When you were there for orientation or something? I did meet him. Um, a very nice, very nice person, like very important about like baseball, but it, it was just a really, truly an honor and a blessing to meet, meet him. And I'm very grateful that, see, like, that's why like building your network and making connections with people and really having like those interactions with people who are going to, are going to benefit you. And that's the benefit that I've had from Dr. Colon. Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So all of this love fest for USC, but, um, do you, do you have any fun facts that, that maybe even I don't know? Um, is there anything that you want to share with everybody? Something that you just fell in love with or a tradition that you're excited about? I'm very excited for the uh, football games. We have like two very famous songs that we like chanted football games over and over and over again. We have the spirit of Troy, which dates back ages in our fight on song, which fight on is like the the symbol, the representation of USC really is that is that spirit of like fighting on, like persevering through anything. And those are a couple of quirks. I'm also going to be going to school with Bronny James. I'm a big basketball fan. So, and we have award-winning Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams leading our football team again this year. So hopefully we're going to, hopefully we're going to win the national championship. I believe, uh, but. <laughs> so exciting. I know. I'm, I'm, so I have my, I'm all set with my season tickets as well. So I'm super excited. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll have to catch up with you at a football game for sure. So absolutely. Oh my goodness. Okay. So hang tight. I'm going to do the, the wrap up here and then we'll just wave goodbye to everybody. Okay. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I told you you were in for a treat with Esteban. I mean, he's just uh, amazing. And I want to thank our guests for being here. Thank you Esteban for being here and being, uh, you know, open and honest and candid about, uh, you know, your, your journey it really takes someone who is courageous and brave to go through the college admission process because you're putting yourself out there knowing that the possibility of you know, being rejected maybe for the first time, but also the big joy of being accepted to your dream college. So super exciting. Thank you so much. So for those of you who are watching, if you want to learn more about the college application product process, please head on over to my website and download your free gift from me. You can go to drcynthiacolon.com. You can also go to Destination U University, Y-O-U University. Just like the name of this podcast, it will take you to the same place. If, you, if this episode has in any way fueled your confidence or helped to build your own dreams, please like and share and subscribe to this episode and also share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. So that's all I have for you today, my dreamers. Remember, if you are a dreamer and a doer, welcome to the family. Destination University is really where dreams really do come true. So join us every week, same time, same place. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success.